He was extraordinary to work with. I loved working with him. It was, it was easy. It was just easy. Eric Nils has been passionate about filmmaking since he was a small boy, when his father owned an 8mm film camera. He's worked for many years as a freelance director for a national television company and given lectures on sound and film editing. Susie got interested in filmmaking after she was given her first digital video camera eight years ago and hasn't stopped making films ever since. She has written for several magazines and is currently working on her autobiography called Living with a Genius. Although the Walkers share a love of filmmaking, they have very individual styles and mainly work on their own projects. This program is a celebration of their work. There's a sense of calm on his sets. He doesn't raise his voice, he's a man of very economic direction. For every accusation of being bleak, opaque and inaccessible, he is also warm, funny and humane. The important thing about a film is it should be original, right? It should be something that you've never seen before. It should be unexpected. And it should have a, 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 have a modicum, and I'm, I, I stress that word, just a modicum of technical proficiency. So it should be in focus. It, you should, it shouldn't wobble all over the place. You should be able to hear the sound, hear what people are saying. That's all you need. Last spring, I was invited to the home of Susie Walker, an independent film director who I know quite well. We wanted to discuss her recent documentary called Cooper and to hear what she had to say about the Froome Film Festival she had just attended. Susie lives in an old Toyota motor caravan, a warm cosy little place where she first offered me a large mug of red wine. <laughs> Wait, where are you? You feel like comatose at the end of it. Oh Susie, she's sweet isn't she? Oh, Susie, well, she's sweet, isn't she? Susie, oh, she's sweet, isn't she? I look for something that is unique and inspiring and unexpected. That's the thing, it must be unexpected. I don't want to see someone's holidays. I don't want to see someone mowing the lawn. Of course, they're always breaking the rules. One of those rules was never work with children or animals. <laughs> Last summer, I saw a spider in the garden and I couldn't resist filming it. Now I've fallen in love with nature. I spent hours filming this spider and I hope you enjoy the result. I do care about spiders. But they're just really tickly and I'm like, get it off me! Well, what was good about Suit of the Spider? First of all, it's very, very well photographed. Beautifully photographed. Beautiful close-up photography, very, very well filmed. Because it feels like the spider's singing a song while it's spinning it's this like... way. Yeah, and instead of the guitar being played, it feels like that he's plucking the strings to make a guitar. That is really original and really interesting. It connects you with emotions deep inside, and once he has touched those innermost feelings, he has you. You are under his spell. My obsession with steam railways took me all over the southwest. But this film was a real challenge. Stand back, please. Back yourself. I mean, hiring a steam engine and six carriages didn't come cheap. And then, of course, there was the essential catering to organise. Fortunately, there was a buffet car, which came with its own built-in entertainment. Let's start singing, if you want. Yeah. Pirates <laughs> of Penzance. So Susie can go into the situation and she can talk to real cameramen, real sound recordists, real programme presenters, who are in the business of creating something that's completely artificial. So you get you get three worlds in one. You get the artificial world of the Floggit programme, you get the world of making the Floggit programme, and then you get Susie filming the making of the Floggit programme. It's a bit like a club sandwich, really. As her producer, it was a pleasure to work with Susie on that film. I 
I'm learning my lines and I was only just given them this morning so yeah. I've just got this one in my head and we're going to use that big jib shot combined with another camera and use the cue and the church so fingers crossed. <laughs> it's all set up, it's all artificial, it's not real but it is real. What are you going to do with all this then? I am going to put it... Um... Did I ever tell you the time when me and Richard Burton met up for a drink in Dublin? Blimey, that was a laugh. I banged up. I thought he was still banged up. He's out, is he? I thought he was still inside. Did I ever tell you the time when me and Richard Burton met up for a drink in Cork? Blimey, that was a laugh. Did I ever tell you the time when me and Richard Burton met up for a drink in Limerick? Blimey, that was a laugh. They haven't let him out, have they? Well, who would have known? <laughs> I love them, man. You know, it was, can be us pain sometimes but then I've no doubt I can I just think he's a, a great actor and I think he's on a roll man I mean he's done some he's been in some great films already and he's done some wonderful work in them and um, and he's the loveliest fella now I love the metric system very much and I can't understand why people want to cling to the old-fashioned and outdated system of avoir du poids weights and imperial measurements such as rods poles, perches, links, and chains. If you don't believe me, ask a sailor. And as far as horses' hands go, I don't even want to discuss it. Suffice to say that the elite have chosen four inches for their unit of measurement. They should all be locked up. When I first met Susie, she didn't like me much. 20 years ago, when I first met Susie, she didn't like me much. Now, when I first met Susie, she didn't like me much. She was suspicious of me. She used to approach me sideways. I tried to make friends with her. I tried to kind of be merry and, and warm and, 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 and chummy. But she, she kept me at a distance. She kept me at about three and a half feet. I remember, because I had a tape measure. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marty Departy. I'm a filmmaker. At this very moment, I'm editing my latest 3D film. In this film you're about to see, I want to explore the life and career of getaway driver, film director, and cultural icon, Susie Walker. Didn't someone describe her as an alcohol fueled raspy-voiced woman for more than three decades, this alcoholic, drug fueled raspy-voiced woman has enjoyed fast cars and fast living. So hold on to your seatbelts, sit back and enjoy this film. It could be a bumpy ride. Thank you. <laughs> She's a great driver though, isn't she? Oh yeah, I've got to tell you this. Uh, there was that time when we hired a gazebo from a props company. They had it for years apparently. It was a very popular item. How we managed to break it, I'll never know. That was so funny and clever and witty. Well, obviously we had to offer them compensation, but they didn't seem too happy with the five pound Marks and Spencer voucher that I offered them. I can't think why. No, of course we weren't happy. We were absolutely livid. And in fact, she still owes us for the bunting. And that is a very funny film. I laughed and laughed at that film. I mean, I mean, in my mind, I think the world went from black and white to technical.
No, he was he was extraordinary to work with. I loved working with him. It was, it was easy. Mm-hmm. 